Hello everyone and welcome to Toon Runes, the show that goes over cartoons both old and new to give you guys the answers to questions you've always asked. And today we have another theory about Steven Universe. But before we get into that, I wanted to remind everyone to hit that bell icon to receive notifications and when I upload so that you don't miss anything from me. Today's featured fan art is by Dragon Ash in the community discord. If you have fan art from me that you'd like to see featured on the channel, you can send it to me on any of the social media sites below or in the community discord. I also wanted to give a quick spoiler warning to those of you who have not seen the episode Legs from Here to Homeworld. If you haven't yet seen this episode and don't want to be spoiled, this is your only warning. Now that we got all of that out of the way, it's time to get on to the rest of the video. Now, today's theory is covering a subject that I thought about in the past but never actually made a video on before. But I have a Tumblr post on it that I made a few months ago, so if you'd like to see my original thoughts on the subject, I will be linking that below. However, after the most recent episode, Legs from Here to Homeworld, I feel like I now have enough evidence to make a strong enough theory video on the subject. Of course, the subject I'm referring to is the identity of the gem species. And to be more specific, I'm going to be talking about what I think they are scientifically speaking. And what I think all of my evidence in this video points to them being is some sort of artificial intelligence otherwise known as AI. And if this seems too outrageous or improbable to you, just continue watching the video and I'll do my best to change your mind. Now, let's get the obvious out of the way and state some of the main and most important facts that we already know of. We know that 1. The gems are aliens made to conquer other planets. 2. Their physical forms are made from light. 3. They are their gemstone, not their physical form. 4. They do not need to sleep or eat. 5. Their stones can be used to power objects and tools. 6. They cannot sexually reproduce and they need to use machines called gem injectors in order to make more of themselves. Now, of course, there are more canonical facts that we know about them as a species, but these are the most important that I'm going to touch upon first. Now, one of the biggest and most important revelations that we got about the gems as a species was back in Season 1 and the episode Steven the Swordfighter. In this episode, Pearl is poofed and retreats back into her gem. For those of you unfamiliar with this term, poofing means that a gem's physical form is too damaged to continue working properly, so they retreat to their actual gemstone in order to recover. And as seen later in the episode, Pearl reforms, this time in a different outfit. How long reformation takes depends on the gem and other currently unknown factors. However, it is implied that personality has a part to play in the reformation process. For example, Pearl may take up to two weeks to reform, while Amethyst only takes a few minutes or up to an hour or two to reform. What happens during this process we don't know, but after a single pale rose it is revealed that there is some sort of plane of existence within the gem itself. Steven enters Pearl's gem in order to find her phone and comes across this plane of existence. In here he's able to go through multiple timelines from Pearl's past until he he finds the moment he was looking for. Now, this is an interesting concept when you look further into it. Now, if you were to just think in simple terms, you would see this as Steven going through Pearl's memories. And if you thought this, you'd be correct. Sort of. However, the fact that he can travel through her memories by going through her gem itself while interacting with past versions of herself suggests otherwise. It almost seems like Steven is going through stored memory like you would on a computer. Think about it. You go into Pearl's gem, then there's another Pearl there. In order to go deeper, you go into that Pearl's gem and you keep doing so until you get to the stored memory that you want to get to. Now, to me, this almost seems like you're going through folders on a computer. You go into the base folder, which branches off into other folders that store various information information. Once you reach the memory you want to watch or review, you can interact with it almost as if it's a save file or some sort of document. The fact that this is even a feature in the gem species gives us a huge clue as to what the gems actually are. And I'm sure by this point you guys know exactly where I'm going with this, but just sit tight. In addition to going through memories, going back to the reformation process when a gem reforms, they cycle through all their past reformations before deciding on their newest form. This almost seems like they're cycling through different stored versions of themselves that their gemstone remembers. It's also important to note that the gems seem to have a base form that they can build off of as easiest seen from Nephrite when she first reformed back in Monster Buddies. She has a simple shape based form which quickly deforms upon regeneration into Centipedal. And as we know from our interactions with corruptions, corruption is something that is completely involuntary and is something that the gem itself cannot control. Nephrite's fight against the corruption in Monster Reunion and Jasper's corruption in Earthlings only further proves this. In both cases you can very clearly tell that they don't want to be corrupted and turn into monstrous versions of themselves. But they're given no choice and it only seems like their gemstone forces this form upon them. So this brings up the question, 
What exactly is corruption? Well, we know from multiple episodes now that corruption is caused by the damage of the diamonds. The damage of the diamonds is always associated with a very bright yellow, blue, and white light, along with some messed up audio. Bismuth upon seeing Biggs Jasper also mentions that only a diamond can do damage like that. The fact that they're literally referring to corruption as damage, I think pretty obviously hints towards the answer of what the gems are. Just like when a computer is damaged or infected with a virus, files can become corrupt. In some cases, that's literally the used term when you try and open a damaged file. It will tell you file is corrupt, cannot open, or something similar to that phrase. Corruption is literally called corruption because it's as simple as that. It is the corruption of the gem files and programming within their gemstone. The diamonds somehow are able to scramble or damage said code or programming, causing the gems to stop working properly. And it isn't just corruption that we see this happen in either. We also see this happen when a gem is cracked or when a gem is shattered and turned into shards. If a gem is cracked, it'll continue to work, but not properly. The gem's form will glitch and mess up the physical form or the functionality of the gem. We can see this easiest with Amethyst back in an indirect kiss or Eyeball back in Bubbled. In both these cases, the gem's physical forms glitch out and stop working properly because they're broken physically, much like a computer will stop working if one of its components malfunctions or breaks. Something that's more interesting, however, is when the gems are turned into shards. As we can see in Secret Team, when some gem shards are unbubbled, they reform but only as body parts. This could be because the information stored on that gem fragment is information on how to form that specific body part. That's why you have arms and legs forming from fragments and nothing else. We can also look at the forced gem fusions and the cluster for confirmation on this. With the forced fusions specifically, they're made up of a mix of body parts, hands, legs, and other questionable parts, further proving that certain parts of the gem itself store instructions on how to form certain body parts. So, splitting the gem apart would make sense as to why it can only do certain things when in parts versus full reformation when it's all together. The cluster also proves another interesting aspect of this. When Peridot talks in Gem Drill, she says something about the Force Fusions looking for the lost parts of themselves. And if the cluster proves anything, it's that even when a gem is shattered, it doesn't die. Steven can even talk to the gem shards, even if their responses are very one-worded. So this is even yet more evidence that the gem itself serves as some sort of computer-like structure. Though this begs the question, what exactly is the damage of the diamonds otherwise known as corruption? Well, if we're going off the theory that gems are some sort of AI or computer system, System, there's a few answers to this. Either corruption is some sort of virus, reprogramming, or command. And if we look at the facts and go off of wordplay of damage that seems to be very heavily used, I think it's safe to classify corruption as a virus or malware. Viruses and malware damage your computer and corrupt your files in some cases. Like for example, back around a year ago, my computer got a really bad case of malware that's known as ransomware. Ransomware is a subset of malware that converts your computer files to an extension that is unrecognizable to the computer and therefore or unreadable. Essentially, ransomware corrupts your files, then the creator of the malware is the only one able to send you the decryption key to get your files back and uncorrupt them. And in this case, I really do see corruption as some sort of malware like this. It's almost like it's corrupting or damaging certain parts of the gems to prevent them from working properly. And this is only further proven by how the diamonds, or the ones who caused it, are the only ones able to heal the damage that they caused. They're the ones who caused and inflicted this damage and corruption, so it makes sense that they're the only ones that have the key to correct it. However, this brings us to our next subject. How exactly was the corruption inflicted? As previously stated, we know it's portrayed as a bright light with an eerie tune. And for this answer, we don't really need to look that far. Something that Steven Universe is known for is its music, both because it's excellent, but also because it plays into the story. It's mentioned in Gem Hunt that the song between Connie and Pearl actually happened, and Garnet's Stronger Than You is the tune played by Greg at Ruby and Sapphire's wedding. Suffice to say, music has a very big part to play in the story. We even get specific tunes and musical sound effects when certain events happen. For example, each gem has their own theme which plays into any of their fusions, they have their own weapon summon effects, and the corrupted gems or shattered gems all have messed up tunes associated with them and their appearances. So I do think it's very possible that music serves as some type of code for them. That is to say, the corruption tune that plays was the tune that corrupted the gems. And this is why Rose, Pearl, and Garnet were safe from the corruption. Because as we know from Ocean Gem, Steven's shield is reflective, in both a sound and light reflective way. We know it can reflect light from your mother and mine, and as I just stated, it's also been shown to reflect sound. Which would make sense as to why they were safe from the corruption. 
Adversely, it is also possible that the beams of light are also in some way a form of coating, and that would explain why Rose was able to survive from the damage of the diamonds. It may be also a combination of the two. However, I personally think that music is far more important to the gem species. I mean, Rose was drawn to Greg because of his music, and it's arguably the reason why they first got together. Not the reason she stayed, of course, but the reason she was drawn to him in the first place. Even looking at this further, most of the intense emotions in the show are explained through song. We get Pearl's It's Over Isn't It, Yellow Diamond's What's the Use of Feeling Blue, and Lapis's Distant Shore that explain their motivations and emotions. The fact that they usually always default to song to communicate their emotions I think is pretty telling. There's also the fact that Steven picks up so quickly on musical instruments as was noted by Greg in the extended intro. Steven has been shown to have knowledge on multiple musical instruments, including the ukulele, electric guitar, and piano. For a kid his age, mastery at multiple instruments is rather impressive, especially since he also writes his own songs. The gems themselves also show mastery at using instruments, despite them having little to no human interaction or understanding at the start of the series, which is where we see them using said instruments. Even Peridot, who seemingly had no concept of human music, picks up on what Steven is teaching her almost instantly, despite being a literal alien who has likely never heard of Earth's version of music before. All of this hints to music having a much greater meaning and involvement in this story than we currently know of and understand. It's so far integrated within the show that it needs to have some greater meaning, especially with how much music itself adds to the show and the overall experience of it. Moving past the music portions, I did want to get more into the actual science of the gem species. Now, as stated earlier in the video, gems are beings who are made of light. At least their physical forms are. Their gemstones seem to be made of whatever actual material their non-sentient earth equivalents are. Anyways, this raises a few very interesting points that I've done an extensive amount of thinking about in the past, and a lot of this can make its own video, so I'll save it until then, at least the detailed parts. But to make the long and short of this, light can be tangible under certain circumstances. Without getting into the nitty gritty, light can become physically touchable by creating an artificial atom. If you bring this artificial atom close to a superconducting wire carrying photons, light turns into a liquid-like substance that can be frozen and become solid. Not only is this mega cool, but it also proves and gives us a better explanation as to how the gems have a physical form. A lot of gems like quartz and diamonds also conduct electricity in real life, which makes this all the more possible. How it seems to me that the gem species works is projecting light and then forcing it to become solid by doing some sort of method similar to the one that I mentioned above. We already know that the gems are fully capable of making projections, as we've seen from Pearl herself with the utilization of the hollow pearls. So it seems to me like the way gems have physical forms is through projecting their physical body from their gemstone. This would also make sense as to why the gems have the ability to shapeshift. I mean, the rays of light that they turn into upon transforming almost look like a liquid, right? Well, I think how it works is they can freeze and liquefy the light that makes up their solid form, making it easy to change themselves. This is why generally as well, gems can only have colors similar to the color of their gemstone because it's the color of the light reflecting from it. Though, as one of the laws of physics states, energy within a closed system can neither be created nor destroyed. This is why it makes sense when talking about gems like Amethyst not being able to hold a form that is much bigger than herself. She only has so much light or light converting energy to work with, and she can't create more light from nothing. Adversely, this is why Pink Diamond can take on the smaller form of Rose Quartz because she's literally not overusing her available resources since Pink Diamond is much bigger than Rose. How they're able to create artificial atoms and superconduct photons is beyond me, but it's also important to note that artificial atoms are engineered, which means they aren't naturally occurring and are man-made. This only further plays on the information that gems need to be AI, which means they were created and programmed by somebody to be able to do what they do. They couldn't have just come out of nowhere. And without getting too far into one of my other theories, I'll just link the Sneeple theory in the info card now. Now whether the gems creators will come later into play or have a big part in the story, I don't know. However, I do think it's irrefutable at this point that the gems were made by someone or something, most likely by an organic species who was extremely intelligent and used the gems for many purposes. More evidence on this is shown in how gems can be used as power sources. One of the first and major instances of this was Lapis Lazuli and Mirror Gem. In the episode, Lapis's gemstone is used to power the mirror. Similarly, in the episodes Sirius Steven and Steven's Lion, we can also see gemstones being used to power structures and tools. If we're going by the same logic, 
magic as lapis, these gemstones could theoretically be removed from their devices and then reform into their humanoid forms. However, the fact that gemstones are even used in this way seems to imply that this may have been their original use. As we can see from homeworld technology, there are other sources of energy that can be used that aren't gemstones. In a lot of cases, the power sources are gem-like in appearance, but they aren't faceted singular gemstones. They're more like slabs of minerals, which I doubt are sentient. However, if raw material can be used as a power source as well as sentient faceted gemstones can be, this seems to imply that the material that they're created from can either create or conduct energy. And if this were the case, the white diamond powering homeworld theory makes all the more sense. Now, the white diamond powering homeworld theory is something the community has already talked about, so I'll just briefly cover it. Essentially, the theory is that the reason why white diamond doesn't and hasn't moved is because she's powering homeworld. This is only further supported by the fact that her head glows white and her facial features other than her eyes and mouth are unable to be seen. This is probably because her gemstone, which is placed on her forehead, is glowing very brightly to put out energy. This is only further supported by the fact that we can see several white lines going through homeworld which seem to portray power lines that branch off to different portions of the planet to power it. It's almost like she's the heart of homeworld or that she's the main power source that holds it all together. Her having the capability to do this really only proves to me even further that the gems are artificial intelligence. But that's not the only fact about White Diamond that raises suspicion for me. The other big one is how she conducts herself and how she speaks. Now, we haven't really seen much of her. That being said, what we have seen seems to give the impression that she's hauntingly friendly. And by that, I mean that she's friendly, but not in a good way. White and Blue seem to imply that she has a temper that's easy to agitate, but she showed nothing but smiles to Steven. However, in my opinion and experience, a smiling face doesn't necessarily mean friendly. Sure, a smile is usually associated with happiness, but that's the direct opposite feeling I got when we were introduced to White Diamond. And a lot of people have also been comparing White Diamond to GLaDOS from the Portal series, and I think that's an accurate comparison. She's pleasant in the way in which she talks, but that's only a facade. Her actions and overall dismissive attitude speaks volumes. And I know a lot of people have been saying she might have just been cheery because that's her way of acting like everything is okay and thinking everything is okay, but it's also very possible that if gems are some sort of AI, she's pleasant because she was programmed to be that way. Think about it. If you had some form of AI that was serving you to accomplish a task, you you wouldn't want it treating people rudely. You could eliminate that issue by programming the AI to always be pleasant. Now I think in this case it's a bit too early for us to tell if White Diamond is constantly like this, but given what we have seen from her, I don't think it's a far stretch to make. She seems entirely unfazed by Pink Diamond's actions, playing them off as if she was just having some playtime. When in reality, what Pink Diamond did should have been seen as unacceptable to her as it did to Blue and Yellow Diamond. If White Diamond was some sort of AI system made to serve and power another alien species, perhaps her creators, that would make a lot more sense. Additionally, the White Diamond mind control theory would also make a lot of sense here. Now I've touched upon the White Diamond mind control theory as well, so if that's something you're unfamiliar with, I'll link the video in the info card and description description now. But essentially, the theory states that White Diamond has mind-controlling powers, or at the very least, heavy mental manipulation abilities. This theory is best proven with White Pearl as she lacks Dee Dee Magnol Hall's voice and is instead voiced by Christine Ebersole, who is also White Diamond's voice actress. Coupled with White Pearl's broken appearance and stiff doll-like movement, it seems that White Diamond is using some form of mind control on White Pearl. If we're playing off the corruption idea I touched upon earlier, mind control isn't as sci-fi as if the gems were a AI. Just like ransomware and file corrupting exists, there are types of malware that can take control of your computer and force it to do things. Some examples are forcing web browsers to redirect you to malicious sites, forcing your computer to click on things without you clicking on them, or in extreme cases, your computer may be remotely controlled by the person who created that malware that you were infected by. If this works similarly to how I hypothesize corruption works, it would explain the mind control abilities. White Diamond could be controlling White Pearl simply through sound, light, or the newly introduced aura waves. The aura waves, however, may be the more solid answer. This is because when seen in both Reunited and Legs from Here to Homeworld, only gems, or in Steven's case, half gems, are affected by the diamond's aura powers. Blue Diamond seems to be able to have some sort of mental influence with hers, making the crystal gems cry with her aura. However, Connie and Lion are unaffected by the aura while everyone else remains affected. This is because Connie and Lion are not of the gem species, so if the aura is some kind of coding, it makes sense that 
that they aren't affected by it. After all, they don't have gemstones that can be influenced by some sort of coding, so they can't be manipulated with it. It's not simply just some form of sharing empathy, since humans don't lack empathy. However, they do lack the gemstones that would allow them to be manipulated by such an ability. While yes, Steven was able to reach Connie with his aura, it's also important to note that Steven is also a human. This stands to reason that since he's human, his abilities work a little differently than if he were just a full diamond. Now with all the main points and evidence out of the way, we can move on to the less important but just as interesting evidence. The first piece of evidence is the lack of sexual reproduction. The gems are a genderless species, meaning that they don't sexually reproduce. Instead, they need to artificially create more of themselves by using gem injectors into mineral-rich areas on planets. This almost seems as though it's a production line and less of a natural process. Much like how robots are made, there's a sort of factory-like vibe that the kindergartens give off. Additionally, when gems are made, they're made knowing exactly what they are and what their purpose is. They don't have a baby or teen stage, they're made as adults. They pop out of the ground knowing their place in their society as well as their function. They also come out with their uniforms of which correlate with the diamond that owns them. It's almost like they've been programmed to know these things and how to look. It's why they all have the same voices, same general look and body build, and similar personalities based on what their job is. Like how all the Famethysts act similarly and treat each other all as family, even when they just came out of the ground. It's almost like they're programmed with a base program to act this way to which they can build off of if they decide to deviate from the norm. Other interesting facts about the gems is that they do not need to sleep or eat, but they can if they want to. If they are some sort of artificial being, they would not require caloric intake to function, nor would they require rest. They would likely get all of their power from the minerals they absorbed when they were in the ground, which would also explain why they drain the life from the earth and why the kindergartens are so barren and void of life. Another interesting and often overlooked fact was one that was brought to our attention and it could have been great. Amethyst tries to mirror Steven jumping around like a moon boy, but gets upset when she can't do it. Peridot then explains that their physical forms adjust to gravity because they are a space-faring species made to conquer other planets. This means their gemstone automatically calculates and readjusts their physical form accordingly in order to allow easy movement and travel. We know Amethyst is unaware of this based on her reaction. This means it's something that her gem did automatically without her knowledge and not a taught skill. This only piles onto the evidence that gems are programmed in a way and are therefore some form of AI. One last and final little detail I wanted to mention is how Pearl connects with devices. She usually sets her hand inside the screen of the device, to which her eyes go blank and she projects through her gemstone the data that she's been receiving from the system. This seems like something only computer-based systems could do with other computer-based systems as they function similarly. After all, sharing data between two computers is not a difficult task. I would also like to mention super quickly that the reason why Pearl was silenced may not have to do with magic at all. It could be simply because Pink Diamond gave her an order and it locked her systems up. So to recap and give my theory on what I think this evidence leads to, allow me to explain. I think that the gem species was made as a way to serve and better the lives of another alien species. White Diamond was the first diamond and likely first gem to be made and was programmed to be both a power source and an AI system. She was programmed to be cheerful and friendly, but didn't stay that way. White Diamond went rogue and figured out how to reproduce and make more gems. These gems having been programmed by her are loyal to her, and she overthrows her creators. Whether or not these creators are the evasive Sneeple is unclear. White Diamond has control over the other gems because she's almost like a master computer with adminning abilities. The other diamonds are also given similar abilities, able to manipulate lower ranking gems with their aura abilities. Humans aren't affected by these abilities as they lack gemstones to receive the input message. Corruption is a similar type of manipulation, but it involves corrupting the mind and quote unquote files of the gem, forcing them to become distorted versions of themselves. But of course, this is all just a theory. If you have more evidence that gems are AI, make sure to put them below. I know I've probably overlooked or missed something. As well, if you think the gems aren't AI and are something else, be sure to give your reasonings below. I also have polls over on my community tab after every video, so make sure to interact on those posts and share your thoughts. I also wanted to give a very special thank you to Misao Mal who is a pro-level patron on my Patreon. If you'd like to support me or see scripts to my videos early, consider becoming a Patreon member. And if you like this video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. Have an amazing day, guys.